Welcome to This Week Inside Sim Racing, March 30th edition. I'm Darren Ganji here with my good buddy, Sean the Builder Cole. Hello, everybody. I cut you off there. <laughs> and This Week Inside Sim Racing is sponsored by iRacing.com. And we have our own special still going. And you can get the Silverado, Chevy Silverado, Michigan International Speedway, all the base content, and three months for 20 bucks. And you got to use the code PR ISR trucks when you're signing up. Absolutely. And you're going to need all of that to run in the event that we're running this weekend. So we're getting down to crunch time. It is this weekend, the March on Michigan. March 31st is the race. And we have some great prizes for the event. We have an RC GTR V2, a GT Omega wheel stand. We have $200 in gift cards, the NASCAR Superstore and $200 gift cards in iRacing. So lots on the line. And on top of that, we have the beefed out Track Boss Champion by Derek Spears Designs, a T500 RS wheel and pedal set by Thrustmaster. NVIDIA's offered up a 580 video card and Tamiya is gonna be giving a model that we have yet to announce. We're not sure what that model is gonna be yet. And that totals over $2,000 in prizes and the race is free to enter. And we have over 300 people signed up. When I checked yesterday, there was 306. So, okay. so they're getting quick. Yeah, get in quick. There still is a little bit of room, a little bit of time. And the way it's all going to play out, we're going to have a big qualifying session before the race. We're going to group the field into two groups, one for C license through pro and one for rookie and D license drivers. And we'll qualify and that'll kind of seat the entire grid into those two different tournaments. That's right. And to enter, you go to www.sscarace.com. Sign up and find out more about our event, and the prizes will be distributed throughout the different race servers. Every race server will have a prize for that server. Winner of the top split gets to pick his prize as long as he doesn't cause an accident, as long as he doesn't bring out a caution or wreck somebody else. Um, if he bumps the wall, you know, gets a little one times, you know, for, that doesn't matter. But if you cause a wreck and you're the winner, you are not going to get a prize. It's going to go to the next person in line, and the top winner of the top split, speaking of which, which will be broadcast on PSR TV live. Uh, check it out, it'll be at one o'clock Eastern time. And the winner of that top split will get to pick his prize of those 10 we mentioned. So, and then we'll distribute them throughout the other splits. Uh, so does he want a T500 or a new rig or, oh, pick what you want. Yep, lots to pick from. So check it out at sscarace.com and we hope to see you guys there or tune in and watch it if you can't. And next up on the show, we covered this series a long time ago and quite a bit. Actually, off and on, we've covered them since. Mm -hmm. uh, Formula Sim Racing and some of the best of the best running in that series. They run a full Formula One season and they've been running it for many years now. And they run a mod tailored for R Factor, mm -hmm. broadcast races and everything. And we have a little announcement to make. That's right. We are actually going to be sponsoring one of the teams in this world championship this year. Our logo is going to be seen on the helmets, the rear wing, and the upper portion of both the 20 and the 21 ATR Management World Championship ATR 702 cars driven by Morgan, Morand, and Yannick Lapshin. That's right. We're also going to be on the World Series cars for that team. And it's consisting of an all-Italian lineup of Matteo Vecchioni and Eros Masculi. And the Formula Sim Racing Series starts next month in April. And again, broadcast live. We'll tell you all about it when it comes up. And if you want to check them out, you can go to formula-simracing.net. And I'm really excited to be part of this. And you know, I'm definitely going to be rooting on our, our team. Yeah, absolutely. And really proud that they, you know, reached out to us to be part of their team. And man, I wish them the best. All four cars. Gotta wish, love seeing. I was driving one. I know. And you gotta love seeing our logos on even more cars out there. That's pretty cool. Very cool. So next up on today's show comes to us from Eutechnics, and that's regarding Auto Club Revolution, and they're now in the open beta. So no more trying to get a beta key. Anyone can now sign up for it and check it out. Looks like the closed beta testers are gonna get some gifts for helping out though. They'll get 2,000 in credits, a Lotus Elise SC, and some pins. The whole thing went live on March 27th, so get in there and do some racing. And when you get there, add myself, add Darren as your friend, Sean SRT, Darren SRT, we're in there, and hopefully we'll all get to do some racing. Yep, that'd be cool. And our friends over at GT Planet a few weeks back reported on a new track that they think is being scanned for Gran Turismo 6, and that's Bathurst. 
And before we get to that, I'm curious, is this going to be for the PS4? And when is the <laughs> PS4 going to be out? I would assume Gran Turismo 6 is going to be on the PS4. Right, you would think. I would think. So, you know what? Place some comments in, in this section here on our YouTube page and let us know what you think. So back to the track. It's great to hear they're scanning it for Gran Turismo 6. Well, again, we think it's Gran Turismo 6. What really played out is while they're working on this track, a group of locals who are Gran Turismo drivers saw it going on, approached the crew, and asked them what they were doing and who they are working for. And I guess they got kind of a, blah, yeah, yeah, blah, yeah, you know, Gran Turismo 6. So yeah, I, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, Gran Turismo 6. Oh, yeah. Is that how it went? Uh, that's, how it's, that's the way it looked. Actually, there was a video. We'll place a link to the video and the story at GT Planet to tell you guys all about it. But... Uh, some also some related news. Yeah, Brian Heikotter, good friend of the show, somebody we've been following his career, I guess we'd call it now. He's Not really related to Bathurst, but related to Gran Turismo. Gran Turismo, absolutely. Well, he now has a full-time ride in the Grand Am series. He's going to be running in a Nissan 370Z, so he's pretty familiar with that car at this point, running for Doran Racing. So he's going to be an active part of the Grand Am series. And I can't think of somebody else I'd rather get that ride other than me, maybe. Great guy in their first race uh, with that team. His first race with that team is going to be this weekend. Actually, he ran a race, I think, with this team that we saw at Mid-Ohio. Mm -hmm. Uh, but this is going to be their first this season with that team. Uh, Barber Motorsports Park this weekend, same day as our March on Michigan event on the 31st. I think it's going to be on Speed Channel, 4 o'clock Eastern time. So if you're here in the States, you can tune in and check that out. I know we'll be trying to check it out. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put it on record. Good idea. And we'll get to root for Brian. Exactly. So last thing up on the first half of the show is in regards to iRacing, and they have announced their partnership with Ruff, R-U-F, Roof, Roof. Uh, it's not Porsche or Porsche, but it's just like one. So we've debated this on the show before with Forza, uh, but in this case, this is, as far as I'm concerned, this is a Porsche coming to iRacing. And if you're not familiar with R-U-F or Roof, Ruff, whatever, they're a German auto manufacturer and their cars are built from unmarked Porsche bodies and chassis. And when the chassis arrives, Roof does their own work on the car, but they're essentially Porsches and is the biggest and most renowned company to make Porsche performance enhancing products. I'm almost saying it's like enhanced, it sounds like freaking steroids. It, it does, it's a steroids it for Porsche. Porsche steroids, yeah. Absolutely, so it might not be a real Porsche, but for me it's close enough. Uh, another car I am looking forward to is the Cadillac CTS, which we have some great footage of here. And this is a car also coming to iRacing that uh, hits home for me because I'm just a big fan of Cadillac CTSs. Yeah, and there was some footage that, that cropped up uh, a week or so ago of the car being driven. Cadillac had a, a display going on, but this is some in-game footage. Hope you guys are enjoying it. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to that car too. Only make it better. Yep. So as you're watching this footage, we're gonna wrap up the first half of the show. Stay tuned for the second half where we're gonna have a new Sim Rig of the Week. We're gonna have some race reports and John Hill's gonna be back for another part of Rear View Mirror. Take your hobby to the next level with a quality racing rig that works great with a PS3, Xbox 360, and a PC. GT Omega Racing Simulator is compatible with a wide range of steering wheels including Logitech, Fnatic, Thrustmaster, and more. The GT Omega is available now worldwide by going to www.gtomegaracing.com.
Welcome back to the show, and first up on the second half of the show, we have the Sim Rig of the Week, sponsored by TamiyaUSA.com. For the finest models in RC vehicles, go to TamiyaUSA.com. And Sean, you get to check this rig out firsthand. I did. I actually know Robert DeGraw, Boston, Texas, who I actually met and actually interviewed when I was in Dallas for the iRace for Life seminar. Robert has been sim racing for a bit over two years and runs iRacing, R Factor, and GTR Evolution with his brother Cameron. He built a dedicated room in his home called the Sim Lab, where he solders, tests, and races the modifications that he makes to his simulators. His sim is in a constant state of change, but he is currently running triple 24-inch monitors, a Thrustmaster T500 wheel, or a heavily modified G27 wheel. He uses CST pedals, a Frex sequential shifter, and a Simgear Lightning SST shifter, all bolted up to his Abutto chassis. In addition to that, he has dual butt kickers being run off of a 1000 watt amp. His main computer is an Intel i5-2500K quad-core running a 6970GB video card. He also runs a second computer networked in to handle iSpeed, MoTeC, and Atlas software. For Robert, this all started out as a hobby, but soon turned into his own business. He is now running DRT racing simulators and is building sim rigs for his friends and customers. Man, I want to... I gotta hook up some kind of dual butt kicker system on mine. That that looks really cool. It does. I remember Jeff Bell a long time ago told me to do it. Never got around to it, but now we should. Yeah, I would do left right channel somehow, but that looks really cool. If you want to see your sim rig on our show, put it in our forums at insidesimracing.tv. Go to our forums. We got a sim rig slash cockpit section, which by the way, we just put the death mobile in. Make sure you check out that show. We built a sim rig for under a hundred bucks. But that's at our site, InsideSimRacing.tv. All right, next up on the show, we have some updates on the major series going on around sim racing and iRacing mainly, and it's the World Championship Series, both on the NASCAR and the road side. And on the NASCAR, we've got three races in the book so far. We've got Daytona, Phoenix, and Chicagoland, and lots of action going on. Lots of action is right. We've had three different tracks, three different winners so far. Starting with the season opener on February 21st, 100 laps at Daytona. It was a pretty good race too, as there was only four cautions for 14 laps. And at the end, Jeremy Allen took top honors on that day with Robert Hall and Richie Davidowitz taking the top three spots. Then the series headed to Phoenix for round two, and Nick Ottinger would sit on the pole this week, and that's where he would end up finishing, leading 62 of the 156 laps that were run that night. Tyler Hudson and Michael Conti would round out the top three, but this race saw a lot of cautions, 12 to be exact, and some heated tempers for sure. The short flat one mile was a struggle for those guys, Sean. What did they do uh, over at Chicagoland? Not a whole lot better. You ended up with 12 cautions there, running 50 laps under yellow, and even more tempers are flaring. More than a third of the race was led by the pace car. Coming off the pole and a win at Phoenix, Ottinger was back again with another pole. Although leading 38 laps, that's far from where he would finish as he was caught up in one of those mini yellows. Series reigning champion Ray Alfalo would take top honors, leading 80 of 133 laps, followed by Michael Conti and Steve Sheehan. So at this point I have to ask, does the name Conti seem familiar at all? Yeah, it does, because he actually top three in those last two races was fourth at Daytona and now leads the points in the NASCAR series. If these guys can drive more laps under green, this series could turn into one to remember for sure. Mm -hmm. Series heads to Las Vegas for round four on April 3rd and you can watch it live on PSR TV or iRacing.com forward slash live. Very cool. So now looking over to the road side of things where I've actually been in the booth for both races, the first one was at Watkins Glen, and I was in the booth with Chris Hall for that day. The 2010 series champ Gregor Hutu was back in the front again, sitting on the pole and leading 51 of 56 laps to take the season opener. Jesse Niemannen would finish second for my 3ID, and Samuel Leibert would round out the podium. Series reigning champ Hugo Louis would lose connection and then reconnect, but lose three laps and end up finishing a very disappointing 17th place after starting in second and actually leading three laps. And I wonder if he's going to have to use that as one of his drops this season. And there was a little bit of debate in the last broadcast that we were both in together at mm -hmm. Zanvort for round two 
Uh, these guys get a drop throughout the season, but I gotta imagine that that may be Hugo's, one of Hugo's drops, or he's hoping. You know, it'd be nice to have a drop where you actually did get a point or two, because then all season long you could kind of protect that drop and use it if you need it, but at least he picked something up. Exactly. So speaking of round two, drivers went to Zanvoort and Gregor Hutu leading the way into that series, but Hugo Louis, 2011 reigning champ, would lead the way on that day. Hugo definitely redeemed himself and his connection and led 60 of the 71 laps. Team Redline driver Luke McLean started on the pole and finished a close second to Hugo, just 1.8 seconds back of the reigning champ. That was a good race at the end. Yeah. And Luke made a, uh, a run there and closed the gap and we were thinking he might catch him, but again, it was the old saying, you gotta catch him, but then you gotta pass him. <laughs> yeah, that was a little further away. Gregor Hutu would take third 10 seconds back, but would become the series points leader after two races with 85 points, followed by Louis with 63 and Samuel LeBaire with 53. Series heads to Indianapolis road course this weekend for round three on the 31st. Check it out on PSR TV and lots of going on. Busy. Lots of, lots of, <laughs> lots of going on this weekend on uh, PSR TV, yeah, racing in general. All day long, you can pretty much watch racing. And then try to catch Brian Hunkutter's race too. Absolutely. So next up on the show, John Hill is back. We had him on a previous This Week Inside Sim Racing. And, you know, we kind of led into that and just kind of threw John out there. Who is there. John Hill? Exactly. That is the question. Who, who, who is? is he? John Hill Who's is... Who's John? John is a good friend of ours, good friend of the show. We met him through the show, actually. Yep. And if you've been watching, he went with me to Dallas for the iRace for Life. He's always in iRacing, so you might know him out there if you're racing in iRacing. You John G. Period Hill, if you're on iRacing. John also got his start sim racing or si any kind of simulated racing on the consoles. He's one of the guys that came, he was in a Formula One series on the consoles, ran that for a while, started watching the show. I think he reached out to us. I think I know what it was. He reached out to us asking if we needed a photographer to go to SEMA, I believe. Ah. It was one of, the, one of the reasons he reached out, said, I live local. And then I think we invited him over one day mm -hmm. and became friends with him. And so John is back again. Yeah, with his take on things as a much newer sim racer than, than we are. And much more mature sim racer than we are. I mean, not much more, but John's, you know, definitely a little bit older than us and uh, has been around the block a few more times than us. And, but he's got some great insight about sim racing and, and a lot of people commented, first of all, who is this John Hill guy? <laughs> that was one thing. Last, last uh, segment. But a lot of people commented, hey, you know what? I never really thought about paying attention to my rear view mirror. And, mm -hmm. You know, thinking about the race that I'm in versus always trying to win, which we're all trying to do as sim racers. But so here he is, John Hill with segment number two of Rearview Mirror, and we hope you enjoy it. Hey, welcome to the second edition of Rearview Mirror. I'm John Hill, and I am also the proud owner of a brand new triple screen sim racing rig. And I've got to ask myself, well, how did I get here? I think you have to be a car crazy kid first, little, little toy cars and models and slot cars and RCs and then and video games and then online video games. And from that, there's been this steady progression from the truly horrible, which would be pole position created back in 1982. Prepare to qualify. To the great state-of-the-art stuff that we have today, like iRacing, R-Factor, the console games, Forza, and Gran Turismo. The best part is it's only going to get better. Now what defines better right now? Well, for me, that would be racing on a triple screen rig. Now I decided I really needed to race on a triple screen rig when I went to the iRace for Life conference in Dallas and saw all the great setups there. So I looked around and started buying stuff and lots of times the wrong stuff. I bought a triple screen monitor mount that was too small. So I had to buy extensions and they were too small. So then I had to weld the shorter arms to the longer arms and that finally did the trick. So I bought miles of HDMI cable when I should have bought DVI cable. So I had to buy a bunch of adapters. Uh, I got a 6950 HD video card with one gigabyte of DSRM 
when I should have gotten the two gigabyte version. Well, looking back at my rear view mirror, I think I'm done now. It's all good and it's been definitely worth it. I think I would have done a lot of things differently. I would have taken my time. I would have done a little more research and I would have looked at all the specs. Now before all this, I was racing in my living room on my 58 inch DLP TV and they don't get much bigger than that. But I can honestly say that nothing compares to racing on my triple screen rig. In fact, I would prefer my rig over a motion rig if that motion rig only had one screen. Now, why am I saying all this? Because if you've been thinking about buying a bigger monitor or TV to race on, then maybe buying three relatively inexpensive and smaller monitors might make more sense. Now, I'm using three 23-inch Samsung TVs, and when you put them all together, that is a lot of screen. But 19 or 21-inchers are more than enough, really, and they're much cheaper at that size. Now, if one day you decide to go this route and this little talk has something to do with it, then I think you're going to thank me. Until next time, I'm John Hill, and I hope to see you in my rear view mirror. All right, well, that's going to wrap up this week inside Sim Racing. Hope you've enjoyed the show. Hope you've enjoyed the rear view mirror again. And make sure to check out some of the shows that we just came out with, our DIY rig, the Death Mobile, if you haven't <laughs> seen that. I hope you'll, you'll check that out and enjoy it. Also got some other shows coming out. I've reviewed the Z1 Simwheel LCD, which you might be able to see in the background there. I'm so jealous of that. I love that thing. <laughs> I actually got to review or play with the Apex Load Cell mod for the G25 or G27, so that's a huge upgrade to that set. Huge upgrade. That thing's really cool. Much better than I expected, actually. Yeah, me too. Uh, like us on Facebook. Go to our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash inside sim racing and... Give us a little like check there. We'd really appreciate that. And you got to go to Facebook. We've been doing a much better job of getting some preview photos of what we're working on in the studio. So if you want to know what's coming up, check it out there on Facebook. That's right. And go to our site, InsideSimRacing.tv. Lots going on there. Our new tech section, forums, join in on the poll that we got going. Lots going on on our site. For Sean Cole, the builder, <laughs> I'm Darren Ganji. We'll see you guys next time.